A handful of Scottsbluff property owners voiced their opposition against the Monument Valley Pathway North project at last night's city council meeting as they learned that eminent domain could result in a pathway going through their front lawns. KNEB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, a project that has been in the works for years and then sat idle on the back burner until about a year or so ago is now causing outrage amongst affected property owners in Scotch Bluff. Several community members spoke out against the proposed route of Scotch Bluff's Monument Valley Pathway North project. The $5.2 million, 5.8 mile pathway would add to the existing pathway along the North Platte River and go north towards Regional West Medical Center and east towards WNCC. However, property owners along the route say they were unaware of the new route and weren't given proper notification of acquisition through Eminence Domain. Contacted us and said that they were going to um, acquire our land, uh, which equates to about a third of our, our yard. And it's not next to our property, it's not behind it, it is directly through our yard. The council took no action on the measure, but Mayor Raymond Gonzalez says they didn't take any of their comments lightly and appreciated their input. Well, the building housing storage units at the west end of 36th Street in Scottsbluff suffered significant damage early yesterday morning after a hit and run involving a semi truck with a possible grain trailer. Scottsbluff police say surveillance video shows the truck driver attempted to turn around in the lot at the end of the street, which has no outlet. And tire tracks indicated the semi backed the trailer into a power pole, shearing it off and disconnecting the power, which also ended surveillance video. Neil Smith, owner of the storage building, told KNB News that the damage was significant. It tore off doors and it tore metal and carried it along down the street a little bit. So, uh, you know, it has, I would think it would have to have damage to it. Again, I'm not an expert, but as much damage as it did to the building, it uh, should have damage to the unit. Initial loss was estimated at more than $25,000 for the building and $10,000 for the contents of the two renters. Smith tells us that the suspect vehicle appeared to be a white truck and trailer. Police say that investigation is ongoing. Well, coming up after the break, Dennis Ernest will be in with your full forecast. Platte Valley Companies is your home team financial and insurance network that works for you. When it comes to estate planning, you should seek professional help. And when you do, you should have confidence in who you choose to handle your trust. Talking with someone about estate planning is a very sensitive thing. At Platte Valley Bank, we pride ourselves in keeping our trust operations local, serving our neighbors and friends. Respect for tradition, coupled with vision, that looks to the next frontier. Platte Valley Bank, a Platte Valley company, member FDIC. Run with us in the unstoppable John Deere Gator XUV 835 and be prepared to go the extra mile. Because when others take rain checks, we take the wheel. With three wide seating, heat, and AC, this is the coolest, most comfortable Gator yet. Nothing runs like a deer. Run with us. Visit 21st Century Equipment with locations in Scottsbluff, Torrington, Bridgeport, and Alliance. Arby's $5 meal deal is the perfect bag lunch. Any of these sandwiches with curly fries and a drink for just $5. Arby's, you're the best mom ever. Arby's, we have the meat. This is KNEB.TV weather from the Arby's Weather Center. Arby's, we have the meat. And hello again, I'm Dennis Ernest, and please stop me if any of this sounds familiar. A few more showers, thunderstorms continuing this evening, some possibly on the strong to severe side. Heavy rain, the main threat. Have to be on the lookout for flash flooding, especially some of those southern panhandle areas that really got the rain yesterday and last night, rain and hail in some cases. We missed out on it here, uh, just six hundredths out at Scottsbluff Airport, and 
we had 1100s here at KNEB. Temperatures this evening are seasonal, about where you would expect this time of year, maybe a little on the cooler side with the cloudiness and with the uh, rain that's in the region. Uh, today and tonight, severe weather threat is again fairly low, but it wasn't especially high yesterday either, although some areas were in that marginal uh, area. And areas that were in the slight risk yesterday did see some tornadic activity. We didn't have any confirmed touchdowns, but we certainly did see some funnel clouds. And we may again tomorrow, as we're once again in that marginal category, for Thursday, push it off a little bit further to the east. All right, future cast. This is not live radar, but this is a projection, a model run of where the forecast guidance would suggest the thunderstorm activity to be over the next few hours. Pushing off into the east before things kind of quiet down and clear out overnight. Temperatures should drop down into the low 50s, a little cooler than you might expect. Tomorrow, pretty quiet during the morning. We'll see a little bit of activity pick up as the afternoon comes along. Fewer, farther in between, not as much activity tomorrow, we think, across the region. Temperatures tomorrow should be a little warmer we should get up around 80 or so in a lot of areas. In terms of precip, a little hard to say. Not a great amount in any of those projections. Tonight's low around 52, but again, just about everybody is probably going to get some kind of shower or thunderstorm activity tonight. And then again, tomorrow, it's a little lesser chance, fewer, farther between, but still there. And still there in our extended forecast. And note that Friday and Saturday and Sunday are cooler again with a chance of showers. The pecan chicken salad and ultimate BLT sandwiches from Arby's. It's like eating a whole farmer's market. Arby's, we have the meat for sandwiches. Would your child thrive in a Christian environment with highly qualified teachers, small class sizes, and high academic standards, but still have time for hands-on learning, service projects, and play? A school that feels like family, where biblical character and strong study habits are taught daily. At Community Christian School, we offer all the core academic subjects along with Bible curriculum for preschool through sixth grade with a daycare on site. Call us today at 632-2230 or check out our website at ccsnab.com and discover the difference. You see if CCS is the right option for your family. Next Gen Outfitters is your new local online source for hunting, shooting, and camping gear. With over a century of combined outdoor experience, we aspire to become the trusted supplier of all your outdoor gear needs. Next Gen Outfitters is where adventure begins and tradition continues. For the month of April, get $25 off orders of $100 or more. Go to nextgenof.com and use code NGKNEB. That's N-E-X-G-E-N-O-F.com. Are you ready to join the celebration? Then what are you waiting for? Switch to Viero today and find out exactly why we're better. More towers than the competition, convenient stores in your neighborhood, friendly, helpful customer service, and top phones at excellent values, such as the iPhone XR for free. That's right, get a free iPhone XR when you purchase any other iPhone of equal or greater value. Viero Wireless, your better choice for wireless service. Welcome back. The city of Gehring is making progress on filling a number of top administrative vacancies. Human Resources Director Tammy Cooley says the city is closing in on filling the finance director position and are in the process of second round interviews for the position and are hoping to maybe have a decision by perhaps the first part of next week. Cooley adds that the same situation has happened with the search for a new director of environmental services and there will be a second round of advertising to fill that post as well. The application period for the city engineer's vacancy just closed last Friday, with the review process just getting underway. Well, Nebraska has won a national award for its efforts to attract new businesses and provide economic development. 
Governor Pete Ricketts announced today that Nebraska has received the 2019 Silver Shovel Award from Area Development, a magazine aimed at corporate executives that focuses on the process of picking new sites for business development. Publisher Dennis Shea says Nebraska has done an outstanding job in recruiting businesses and competes well with much larger states. Governor Ricketts is also honoring three Nebraska health care providers for outstanding services to patients in the state's Medicaid program. The governor announced that the winners of the Nebraska Medicaid Provider Awards, and they were Dr. Henry Sikowski, who's an internal medicine specialist at CHI Health Clinic, Dr. Sharon Hammer, a psychiatrist and assistant psychiatrist, psychiatry professor at the University of Nebraska Medical Center, and Dr. Rebecca Lancaster, a family physician with Methodist Physicians Clinic. Well, straight ahead, Shabella Guzman will be in with a check in on Ag News. Touch that dial. KNAB.TV News will be back right after this. More time on the road means more time in the shop. Take your car, truck, or SUV to high-tech automotive. With 10 bays and commitment to quality service and customer care, we can do it all, from general maintenance to more serious problems. High Tech Automotive, between Frank Parts and Bongars. carrying fame get your husker visa debit card so you can take the game with you free with first free checking this is kneb tv ag news from the first national bank ag desk first national bank of north platte the bank to think of first the Legacy of the Plains Museum will begin offering trail rides June 22nd through the summer with the help of Steve and Kelly Davis of Morrill. Kelly said their trail riding business, Dome Rock Livery, is not entirely new. Dome Rock Livery? We're new to the Legacy of the Plains Museum, but we have ran in Colorado for many years. And what we are here for is to offer the public horse rides so they can come enjoy the beautiful museum grounds and see the Scotts Bluff National Monument and learn more about farming and agricultural history. The ride will circle the museum grounds at the foot of the Scottsbluff National Monument, Davis said, allowing for some discussion on history. The museum grounds in itself is chocked full of agricultural history. And so we'll discuss um, many of the pieces of equipment, also the Oregon Trail. You know, the pioneers rode horses through the Oregon Trail and how important the horse was uh, to early agricultural history prior to the tractor. Rick Myers, co-interim acting director at the museum, told us more about bringing the trail rides to the museum. We saw an opportunity to, to provide something new and different for our visitors, as well as an opportunity to uh, straighten up and clean out the Wiedemann barn that was here and turn it into more of an exhibit hall. We have people that come to the um, museum that like to see a barn, but we don't, they don't have the opportunity to go into the barn because it, it was full of a lot of other things that the, is used at the museum. So kind of two-pronged, we're going to... Uh, open up the barn as an exhibit and offer trail rides. The Dome Rock livery at the museum will have 15 horses available from 9 to 5 most every day, with reservations requested but not required. For more details, including pricing, contact Legacy of the Plains Museum. In Gearing, I'm Chabella Guzman with KNEB.TV News. You said yes. Together, you planned every detail. You married. And then you realized 500 square feet just isn't enough room for two. When life happens, find a home that fits. First National Bank North Platte. Start your mortgage pre-approval today. You decide to add another to your family. You start reading parenting books. You're amazed that such a small human could need so much space. When life happens, find a home that fits. First National Bank North Platte. Start your mortgage pre-approval today. 
On April 15, 1924, West Nebraska Methodist Episcopal Hospital, the region's first modern hospital, opened in downtown Scotts Bluff. The goal was to provide the care residents needed close to home, and it's never changed. For 95 years, we've continued to provide exceptional health care for generations of families throughout our region as a community hospital, a regional referral center, and a level two trauma center. Thank you for trusting your health care to Regional West Medical Center. Care Heilbrunn State Farm Agent is here to protect all the moving parts of your life. With auto, home, life, and financial services, Care Heilbrunn and her team make it simple to bring together what matters to you. When it comes to helping local folks with the loans and financial advice they need, we don't horse around. Our only goal is to help you and your family achieve your financial goals with the right loans and savings products. So if you want to bank with people that care about you and your financial needs, stop by or give us a call. First State Bank. We're big on you. Member FDIC. Online at fsbcentral.com. Well, let's take a look what's happening on today's community calendar. That's a look at today's community calendar brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. Think a utility vehicle should do more than take you places? So does Kubota. That's why our all-new Sidekick is built to do it all. Climb more. Tow more. Go more. Cross over to more today. Take your Kubota Sidekick home with no money down and 0% financing for 36 months. Your local Kubota dealer is Sandberg Ippelman and Gehring. Find out what convenient really means at the Western Travel Terminal. Start with our great selection of food and drinks from for real milkshakes and fresh brewed coffee to snacks and hot food. Next, check out our beer and spirits with their everyday low prices. Finally, let us work for you with our full-service gas station and automatic truck and car wash. All this can be found at 822 South Beltline in Scotts Bluff. Western Travel Terminal, your convenient shopping, restaurant, and full-service gas leader. The 5055V from John Deere features the value of choice with a cab or open station, two-wheel drive or mechanical front-wheel drive, and transmission options. In addition to easy-to-use controls and loader compatibility, all of this is backed with a five-year powertrain warranty. The only thing easier than owning a 5E is operating one. See your John Deere dealer for details. Visit 21st Century Equipment with locations in Scottsbluff, Torrington, Bridgeport, and Alliance. Platte Valley Companies is your home team financial and insurance network that works for you. Platte Valley Bank provides a broad range of financial tools for your short and long-term business needs. Our experienced commercial lenders will work with you every step of the way to help your business grow. At Platte Valley Bank, we are proud to provide you with local decisions by hometown people for your hometown business. Respect for tradition, coupled with vision, that looks to the next frontier. Platte Valley Bank, a Platte Valley company, member FDIC. And finally tonight, the Scotts Bluff County Commissioners have approved allocating up to $50,000 to the Japanese Hall History Project so it can relocate to the legacy of the Plains Museum. Tourism Director Brenda Lisey told the board that the property that 
has the building on Avenue C and Scotchbluff has sold. So now the group is trying to raise $210,000 to get the building moved to the museum so its history can live on. She says there's a chance that the entire sum can be raised on their own, but the county has lodging tax funds allocated for this type of project. But Commissioner Charlie Knapper says he feels the board could wait until the November 1st deadline on whether or not the county should cut a $50,000 check. And then I think maybe we could do some, you know, approve a, a smaller amount of money, a lesser amount of money uh, to help with the renovation when it gets to legacy of the plane. Right now what I see is, is we're clearing a lot for a business owner that that wants a, a parking lot paved. I don't know that that's the best use of, of the lodging tax. After Knapper voiced his concerns, the board grant approval for the funding by a 3 to 2 margin. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you here next time.